going out for lunch again. Everyone else is already out there, so I'm kind of playing catch up just a little bit. Random pub. <laughs> Mini electric vehicles. Certainly a very different pace of life in the countryside. Ah, nice and relaxing. Seems to be getting a bit chillier though. That's not right. In about five to seven weeks, so a long time, right, you're going to get a Tesla ride on. You know like um, well, the Lamborghini that Gigi and Grandpa have at their house? It's going to be like that, but a Tesla. And it's going to be all yours. <laughs> Tesla referral program. Because of all the sterling work he's done selling cars. They're giving it to him. Show me what you can do, Jazzy. Show me your big bounces. We were talking last night about the baby inside Jasper. Oh. We we're talking last night about experts and experts' opinions, specifically to do with nutrition, but um, it applies to climate change as well. And part of the problem is, you know, people aren't a big fan of experts. And the main reason why, as far as I can tell, is because what they want is a simple answer to a complex problem, and usually the answers are complex. Unfortunately. Where are you going, chicken? You have some pudding? Oh, yes. No, you're going in daddy's car now. I'm so full. I'm going to have to go for a majorly, majorly long run now. Oh. It was a nice eating mess, though. Yes, it was. It was yummy. Don't think we've forgotten anyone, have we? No. No. Cool. <laughs> Let's go home. Okay, we need lots of range tomorrow, please. Open charge port. It's sort of spotting raining. I'm not happy. The experts at the uh, BBC weather place said it was going to be heavy rain, however, and it certainly isn't that. So. Experts, God, can't trust them. Yeah, that's my solution to Jasper being asleep in the car seat. Perfect. Oh, look at him. Don't know why I didn't think of that sooner. Oh yeah, it is time for me to go for my run now. Not really feeling like it, which hopefully means that it's going to be a really good run. I genuinely do not think that is going to be the case today, but I'm going to do it anyway because I definitely think a bit of exercise is helpful. Huh. At least it's not raining though. Still not going to run outside. Wow. <laughs> that shows what I know. I thought that was going to be a really awful run. And it was actually the best run I've had in about 12 months. Really enjoyable as well. God, I tell you, if it was up to me and I had to choose between a washing machine and a fridge or a running machine, I think I'd probably take the running machine because... I mean, maybe I'm just particularly unmotivated as a person, but if I had to go outside when the weather is not that great, the reality is if I went outside for a run, I'd actually enjoy it more than the run I would have inside. Although I probably wouldn't push myself quite as far. The real issue is I just wouldn't go out for my run a lot of the time. The barrier would just be too high. Whereas the great thing about the running machine is, you know, you can think to yourself, oh, I'll just have a five, 10 minute run. You know, I need a shower anyway, I'll just go for a 5-10 minute run and then, oh look, after 5-10 minutes you think, you know what, I'll just keep going for another 5-10 minutes and so it continues. Whereas, when you go outside, you've got to kind of think, I'm going for a 2 hour run. And it's very difficult to run, you know, 25 minutes away and then think, oh, actually, you know what, I think I'll just stop at 30 minutes. Yeah, what? And, and call a taxi? In our last house, we couldn't find anywhere to put the running machine for the five years that we were there. So um, we just stuck it in the kitchen, opposite the cooker. 
That actually worked really well though, because it meant that the running machine was constantly right there, and you know, you kind of couldn't ignore it even if you wanted to. Anyway, I'd better go clean up. You know, I've just been looking at smart lights. I think I might have to expand the number of things that can be controlled by the old Google Home speaker. Yeah. I can see how this kind of thing could get addictive. That's interesting. I was just looking at the, uh, you know, general news feed of what's going on in life and I saw this Tesla, what is it exactly? Tesla Nomics. And there's a sort of a little video. Basically they've taken this big spreadsheet of data where people have filled in roughly what their range is and the age of the car and the mileage they've done and the number of charge cycles and all that sort of thing. And out of that information they've plotted some graphs. Basically just graphs of battery degradation over time for Teslas. And it paints quite an interesting picture. There is a reasonably large amount of variation. Ultimately what it seems to show is that the battery degradation is not particularly quick. Okay, so there's a car here in the UK, apparently, that has done 91,000 miles and is still on 94% of its original range, which I consider to be pretty good. I'm now on 68,000 miles, 68,500 miles, something like that, and I think I'm probably on about 97, maybe a little bit less, because I'm quite conservative with the way I use the battery, therefore the onboard system might be slightly overestimating, although I would imagine that if a Tesla is gonna do anything, it would underestimate. That would make the most sense to me. I would expect my battery degradation over 200,000 miles to be less than somebody who drives less in the year, because obviously they will have more years, so there'll be more shelf life applied to that battery. But still, it's interesting because it really does, you know, get rid of that old myth that electric car batteries just, you know, oh, you have them for five years and then you have to replace the battery. That is quite clearly nonsense. I think we can, we can say that with pretty much absolute certainty. One effect that you are going to get as it does age is you are going to get to the point where it can't accept a charge that quickly anymore and it's not capable of delivering power at quite the same rate that it was when it was brand new just because the internal resistance in the cells will be so much higher than it was as a brand new battery but either way this is fantastic i'm going to actually link to this guy's original video in the description below because you may well find it interesting i'm certainly finding it interesting one thing is clear there is some variation in the reported figures but then we know two things about Tesla batteries, or lithium ion in general, but certainly as it pertains to Teslas. The first is that like all lithium ion batteries, they don't like to be at the extremes particularly, that does age them quicker. And the other thing we know for sure is that the internal algorithms in the Tesla's sort of central computer work a lot better at estimating how much range you can get out of the battery if you do run it all the way down and charge it all the way up or, or more or less on a you know reasonably regular basis. I have noticed that sometimes the cars that seem to do particularly well on battery degradation are actually the ones which work the hardest, which could well mean that it's just that the algorithms are particularly well fine-tuned in those vehicles as opposed to the ones that don't seem to do as well. And it is simply that, you know, on average, Tesla batteries last really, really well. Not in any kind of biased way at all. That is, of course, what I'm hoping. Well, okay, maybe just a tiny bit biased, but you know, I've got my fingers crossed anyway. And certainly I would recommend, you know, checking out that information and the graph on the sort of website, the Tesla Nomics website, because it's a really good graph and it's a great way to look at that data. I hope you've enjoyed today's blog post. If you have, remember to like it and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Instagram if you don't already and I'll see you tomorrow for the next installment of my daily vlog. Bye. If I do all the driving that I want to do and I just try and minimize the wear on the battery where that's possible, what sort of range is gonna be left at the end of 200,000 miles? And that is a question that I am currently about just over a third of the way to answering. Hmm, I'm working on it you know, as quickly as I can.